What made you realize there was uh, something off about your friend's SO? My best friend's ex-boyfriend walked like he was trying to intimidate people. And every time he asked someone a question about someone's opinion, hey, what do you think of that statue? Do you like Socrat? He'd respond to their answer with, I had a feeling you were going to say that. It seems harmless, but it was like every single time. And if you called him out on it, you couldn't possibly have known I was allergic to X. He lashed out in anger. Every time she tried to break up with him, he'd cornered her and wouldn't let her leave the room until she relented, and even their couple's therapist thought she should leave him for her own safety after two or three sessions. He would wait for her shift to end just sitting in his car in the parking lot, and if she didn't come out fast enough, he'd storm into the building in a fury, but if she came out on time, he would just leave. He wasn't there to pick her up, just to monitor her, which he also did through a GPS tracker he put in her car. She now has a restraining order and has moved twice. He broke into her apartment with a weapon while she was deep asleep and just snuggled up behind her with the weapon between them as if it was his thing. And that is how she woke up. There are other things too. Help me move, but only to find out where I lived. After their breakup, he came to my door several times looking for her. And when she was generally not here, he settled for monitoring my house. Extreme fitness nut who was obsessed with telling people whether or not he could bench them. Hint, usually not. Lots of gaslighting. Don't remember the details. Insisted on changing her cat's name, which didn't stick. Wouldn't let her not watch TV with him, even though there are a hundred things she'd rather do than watch TV at any given time, up to and including a pap smear. This inspired multiple fights. Charmed her parents so successfully that they insisted she go to couples therapy to quote-unquote work out their differences, which were quote-unquote, I don't want to be constantly monitored, also your general controlling behavior is creepy, versus quote-unquote, you have nothing to hide if you're doing nothing wrong. Ultimately, their breakup was supervised by the couple's counselor who had building security waiting in the lobby and her hand on a panic button, who knew she'd have that. Stormed into her work when she quit post-breakup because he decided they fired her and his plan was apparently to threaten them to get her her job back. Took her to court to argue against the restraining order. Judge looked at friend's documentation and how she was leaning away from him even on opposite sides of the room and he was making kissy faces at her and granted the order. Made very public posts on some weightlifting social media thing about what a crazy ex-girlfriend he had and linked her profile in his own profile. And he's in prison now, right? Please tell me he's in prison. That is terrifying. I just, oh my god, I feel sorry for the girl. Story 2. Was best friends with a dude, I'm a lady, had been for a few years, never any chemistry or anything like that, at least on my end. He gets out of a long-term relationship, starts dating around, He'd often introduce me to these ladies as sort of a barometer of whether or not he thought they were a good match. So one weekend, he invited a girl out with our group. She's super standoffish, won't smile, clearly isn't having a good time. I try to talk to her, get to know her, try to tell her about my friend and how great he is. She acts like I'm not there, might as well have been the wallpaper. A month later, I'm on a date and we run into them. Remember, I am also on a date with a man. As they are leaving, they come over to say hello. She seems equally unhappy to be alive. I introduce my dude. The three of us chat for a minute while she stands there. I jokingly tug at his shirt in a you old dog kind of way. She storms out of the restaurant. Both dudes are confused. Was not a flirty touch of any kind, more like a bro touch anyway. Next day at work, I work with this guy. He comes up to me and says, hey, you can't do stuff like that. She's really damaged, has jealousy issues, doesn't trust men. I apologize profusely because I didn't realize I'd done anything wrong, even asked my date, and he was baffled as well. This friend had an emergency key to my house in case I ever get locked out. He returned it a week later, saying something about, what if you call at 2 a.m., but isn't that the whole point? Isn't that what best friends do, help each other in times of need? Flash forward a few months in, he refuses to speak to me. Again, we work together, won't look me in the eye, and he slowly gives up other relationships, male and female. After dating the girl for six months, they get engaged, now married, no idea how it's going or if he's happy. I ended up moving and haven't spoken to him since. Makes me really sad to see people give up who they are for a relationship. Story 3. 
Ugh, the year me and my now ex visited my best friend for Thanksgiving. This is a fairly long story, BTW. I tell this story to people all the time because she's just an awful human being and this story was just a perfect example of it. In 2009, we traveled from South Carolina to Orlando to stay with my best friend Tom of about 22 years now and his then GF, Lauren. We decided it was too expensive to fly up to NY to see our families, so we drove down a few hours to have a friend's Thanksgiving. We used to be roommates and he is a great cook, so we figured, let's do this. So he and I spend all day shopping, cooking, etc., and dinner rolls around. So we have the usual spread, turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing rolls, and it's all sitting on the counter. We go into the living room to get the girls. Lauren comes in first. Lauren goes into the cabinet and pulls out three to four large Tupperware containers and says, Hang on, nobody take anything yet. I need to make sure that I have leftovers for work this week. Proceeds to take about 60% of each dish, leaving it so everyone has extremely small portions with no options for seconds. And takes about 85% of the white meat because reasons. Puts all her Tupperware in the fridge and then grabs a plate. From the already small amount remaining, she takes about half of each dish and slops it on her plate and walks into the dining room. Me and my GF look at each other, take small plates and go sit down. My best friend was visibly upset but didn't know what to say. She eats about half her food then proceeds to throw out what's left on her plate. Now, to clarify, Tom has the biggest heart of anyone I know. He's a 6 foot 5 guy who has a heart of gold and would give you his XL shirt off of his back. Why he was with her, I don't know. He had a good job making 50k plus. She was not a large girl, an average build. Worked at an architectural firm doing 3D renderings. Fairly book smart girl. Not star for money. Important for story reasons. I really wish too that was the end of this, but fast forward to the next morning. Tom decided he was going to make some turkey soup with a leftover carcass and meat. Yum. Big giant pot, lots of goodies inside. Now at the same time, in between watching the soup, he had been browsing Craigslist at the time for an Xbox 360 and came across someone who was willing to meet that day. So he puts the soup on super low and we all decide to go out and get his Xbox. Lauren says, oh, I'll get it for you as an early birthday present. And I think, wow, maybe she's not so bad. So we go out, buy the 360 on our way home. Now literally the second we walk in, we could dig in on turkey soup. But as we are about four minutes from home, Lauren is hungry. She says, I want a double cheeseburger from McDonald's so she can dunk it in her turkey soup. Tom argues that the food is ready, we can see the driveway, but she makes him go to McDonald's so she can get a double cheeseburger. Okay. She's the only one who gets anything and we go home. She rushes to the kitchen, gets a huge bowl, and proceeds to take the large ladle and scoop right from the bottom, filling her bowl with most of the goodies and little soup, leaving mostly broth for everyone else. Goes into the living room, sits down and eats while we stand there, dumbfounded. We make our soup, sit down, eat, and Tom wants to set up his new Xbox. Lauren doesn't really respond as she's dunking her burger and soup stuff in her face. So he gets it set up and fires up Dragon Age, just playing around with it. Lauren has now had enough soup, which BTW is her burger and about three spoonfuls, gets up and throws out about 75% of her meal, walks over to the TV, turns off the Xbox, and says, Okay, you played enough, I want to watch TV now and ending with, well, because I bought it for you, I can decide when you can use it and when I want to watch TV. Mind blown at this girl. The next day couldn't come any faster. Absolutely mesmerized by her and how she can be so selfish. About a year later, BTW, he went to work, waited until she was gone, came home, packed up his stuff and left, never speaking another word to her again. Being the nice guy he is, he even left her money for his portion of the rent for the remaining months of the lease. For anyone curious, he is now engaged to a wonderful girl that is a very big part of our small core group of friends. She treats him extremely well and he's way better off now. They also live together about half a mile from our current house and our dogs are absolute best friends. Had the wrong year. Also, questions about why he even stayed with her or if we talked about it. We did have a lot of conversations about it and at the end of the day, it was a comfort thing. They own two dogs together and he would have to had to save up money to move out to his own apartment and maybe some other reason that I don't know about. I think we've all been in those toxic relationships where no matter what, we are in them for way too long. Not saying it's right, but it happens. 
He knew he was in a crappy spot. Also, yes, he took the Xbox, lol. That was about the only damn thing aside from his clothes. Of the many, many sandwiches and food items appropriate for dipping in homemade turkey soup, a double cheeseburger from McDonald's is not, I repeat, not one of them. If you're enjoying these stories, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out. Thank you so much in advance, and let's go ahead and get back to these stories. Story 4. When my best friend and his SO started in an LDR, I didn't think much of it. But when she would repeatedly make fun of him to her friends on Twitter, I brought it up. She repeatedly cheated on him and acted like they weren't serious at all, told my friend again because he was just head over heels. They finally broke up because of a fight over something unrelated to the things I brought up to my friend. Then they got back together and my friend used the stuff I told him to make a stipulation that if she wants anything to do with him, she has to be serious. For whatever reason, she sticks with it. She started pulling him away from me gradually. Quick flashback, when his ex gave birth to his two sons, I dropped everything, was late to work because of one of them, and spent as much time as I could with them. When I had my daughter, I invited my best friend not once, not twice, but three times to meet her. He couldn't be bothered to come to the hospital, not because of work, but because he needed to be on the phone with his girlfriend. I burned that bridge so quickly. Now they're engaged with a kid of their own. He moved to Florida for her and is an alcoholic now. Good riddance to both of them. Story 5. Me and my cousin grew up together like brothers. I immediately knew his new girlfriend didn't like me from the looks she would give me or how blunt she was when I tried to engage her in conversation. A few months down the line and I tried to arrange a meal with my cousin and asked him to bring his girlfriend along so we could break the ice. Everything was arranged, I showed up at the restaurant, and they didn't. I was stood up. They're now married and have two kids. I wasn't invited to his stag night or his wedding. I was, and still am, gutted. I met my wife and invited him to my stag. He was all paid up, and I couldn't wait to see him again. It was a thing I was looking forward to the most. He didn't show. Again, gutted. He and his wife showed up to my wedding and acted as if there was no problem. It was quite strange, but I didn't care as it was great to just spend time with the man I had considered my brother. We kind of kept in contact via text but never met up even though I tried to arrange it a few times. Then my son was born. I was desperate for them to meet each other and bent over backwards to meet up. I agreed to meet at a play area so his daughters could tag along and go play and he got to meet my son who is named after his brother who passed away. I sat there for an hour before he messaged me to say he wasn't coming. As a final attempt to salvage some kind of relationship, I invited his family to my son's christening. I got a message an hour after it had finished to say he wasn't going to make it as his wife had arranged to do something. That was four years ago. And I haven't heard, seen, or spoke to him since. Still makes me sad, but as long as he's happy, then that is all that matters. Just to expand a little, I have tried to contact him many, many times via text, phone, and Facebook message, but I haven't had a response. I don't believe he is happy, but I don't know enough about his relationship to pass comments. He has cut me off, and there is nothing I can do to change that. I just hope that one day we do get a chance to sit and talk it through, just so he knows I don't hold anything against him or her. If he wants me to be part of his life, then great. If he doesn't, then at least he knows I still love him. Story 6 I met them as an already married couple and everything seemed fine until she went into labor at my house. It was her second child, so she knew it was early labor and decided to rest on our couch while we hung out. We were going to watch her older child when she went to the hospital anyway and our house is 30 minutes closer to the hospital. So it made sense for the three of them to hang around our house until go time. That's when my husband and I started noticing her husband's strange behavior. He was a very charming guy and a very good father to his son, but he started making fun of his wife during contractions. He would roll his eyes and tell her to shut up if even she made the slightest groan. He joked that she was a wussy and was overreacting. The whole situation got so awkward that my husband insisted he go home to get their hospital bags just to give the poor woman a break from her crappy husband. A few months after the birth of her second child, he hit his wife with his car while she physically tried to block him from leaving during an argument. He disappeared for days and didn't come home until she proved to him that she hadn't gone to the hospital or contacted the police. Thus began systematic cruelty that continued for two more years, and she hid it from me like an expert. 
He would hit her and then threaten to withhold money for groceries if she said anything to anyone. I knew he was a jerk and I knew she often needed me to pick her up to get food from food pantries because, quote, he was bad with money, but I had no idea he was hurting her. She finally left him after he hurt her while she was eight months pregnant with their third child. Now he's in jail for a long time. I think we can all agree that this is the worst one right here. Story 7. He had a full-on toddler-level temper tantrum twice at a group game night. Once because during a trivia question, he couldn't remember the planets in the solar system. Then, on the same night, he got pissy playing Uno, threw his cards down, and stormed out. We all kind of looked at each other and at our friend. That was when we knew he was off. My friends and I were all in our mid-twenties and he was over 30, so it was definitely not acceptable behavior. A couple of weeks later was my friend's birthday, so we all went out for the night and ended up at our neighborhood bar. He threw another temper tantrum, I think it was overscoring for darts or something equally ridiculous, stormed out and peeled away in his car, leaving us with no ride home. This was pre-Uber and Lyft, and none of us wanted to spend the money on a taxi, so we sobered up on the two-mile walk back to my friend's house. Thankfully, she broke up with him not long after. She's now with a wonderful guy who not only knows the planets of the solar system, but also treats her a lot better. Story 8. A bit of background, this was a good friend of ours and a previous roommate. At this point, he'd moved out about a year and a half prior, and we'd only had internet contact with him since. It was a meetup of old friends when we went to visit home. This was the first time we, wife and I, met his newest girlfriend after his previous long-term relationship ended. She wasn't so bad, kind of giggling and goofy for him since he's a bit more serious, but fine, they seemed happy. We were out for dinner and she and my wife went off to the bathroom. I thought this was odd since my wife is kind of a tomboy and doesn't do the whole girls go to the bathroom to do their makeup and gossip thing. But I found out later friends Esso invited her to ask her a few questions about her friend. Well, after about 20 minutes went by, I realized they weren't back yet. We were both tipsy and engaged in conversation and time got away. This was a small gathering of a few couples and one of the other girls goes to check on them. Come to find out, friends Esso basically had my wife cornered in the bathroom, crying in her face and demanding to know why our friend had a secret crush on my wife and why he wouldn't admit it to her. After getting the recount from my wife, she said she had no clue if the girl was going to do something to her since a few times she was apparently completely against her to the wall. Apparently, it was a mixture of my wife wanting to calm her down and also a little afraid since she was half this girl's size and legitimately couldn't get past her that caused a long, drown-out issue. Luckily, the person going to check on them snapped the girl out of it and defused the situation. Very bizarre, we've seen her one time since, not exactly on purpose, and she acts like the whole thing didn't happen. She apparently has no history of mental illness, but I have no clue beyond that. Hmm, it's always the whole, and it was never mentioned again, parts of these that are the weirdest for me. She can't just pretend that didn't happen. Story 9. Oh boy. He showed cruel and manipulating behavior from day one, but it was fine because she loved him and she could change him. A year later, he had cheated at least once and was constantly threatening to end himself if she left him. It was fine though because really, he loved her but didn't know how to express it. Year two and he controlled her Facebook and phone and he decided who she could and couldn't talk to. It was romantic though because he just really cared about her. Year three and he'd cheated at least four times and he'd also pretended to end himself and break up with her multiple times each after one of which she tried to end herself. We had a whole intervention thing while she was in the hospital and she agreed to leave him. Two weeks later, they were back together. Quote, he spent $800 on my birthday gift. How could he not love me? Oh yeah, I can't talk to you anymore, squeaky pop, because he says I shouldn't. She's still with him. Story 10. Best friend was adopted as a kid. Adoptive parents passed away in a car accident when he was 11. He was in the back seat. He survived. Became even better mates. Same schools and colleges. He decided he was going to marry this girl. I was happy for him, but I had never met her as I lived out of the country at the time. So the wedding is in six months. I fly down to see family and end up going with my girlfriend and some friends and we all meet up at a local restaurant. Meet his fiance. She seems nice and welcoming. She flirts subtly with me. Nothing major, but talks about my appearance quite a bit. 
in front of her fiancé. I think nothing much of it. Later in the evening, I go to the bathroom. I ended up walking to a cubicle, and as I enter, she jumps in front of me and closes the door with me inside. I asked her what she's doing. Her response is, anything I want. I immediately pushed her out, sit down, and in shock, have no idea what I'm supposed to do. I go back to the table. I'm quiet. I realize that I should tell or say something to him. I pull him outside and tell him what happened. He, too, is shocked. Ruined the whole evening, and next day I flew back to my hometown with my girlfriend to see my family. We didn't speak for months until the wedding. I'm his best man. Whole family was off to me. Bride hated me. We don't speak anymore, but I know what happened, and friends support my decision to tell him. He claims she says it was all a misunderstanding due to being buzzed. I know what I saw. I know what happened. I know what she was trying to do. I just feel bad because I have probably lost a friend, but at least my conscience is clear. Good luck, Philip. I hope you enjoy the stories in this video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you're also going to enjoy What's the strangest rule at a friend's house? Story 2 was incredibly strange and might make you want to question some of your friendships. I'll see you in that video and thank you for watching this one.